Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and hello everyone. Welcome to the uh, fifth video on Advanced Construction Materials Course MKAE 1043. In the fourth video, I did mention about permeability of materials. There are two types of permeability tests that can be performed in the laboratory to determine the uh, permeability of any materials. The first type of uh, this permeability test is known as constant heat permeability test, which is normally performed on materials with uh, relatively high permeability. And another type of test is uh, falling heat permeability test, or some people call it as variable heat permeability test. This type of test normally is performed on materials with low permeability. With regard to geosynthetics, these materials can be highly permeable or can be impermeable. Geosynthetics such as a geomembrane or GCL which are impermeable can be employed to contain liquid whereas geotextile which is normally permeable can be used for filtration. In this video, I will be talking about the application of a geosynthetic in ground improvement. Several methods can be employed in ground improvement to strengthen soil. For example, in the case of loose sand, this sand can be densified or strengthened by applying vibratory compaction. In the case of uh, soft saturated clay, there are several methods that can be uh, employed to strengthen the soil, such as mixing the soil with uh, chemical additives or by installing soil lime column or by installing a soil cement columns or by applying electroosmosis. Another method that can be employed to strengthen soft cohesive soil is by uh, preloading. Let's take a look at uh, this uh, diagram. This preloading will cause stress increase in the soil as well as increase the pore water pressure. This water pressure will drive or will force water out from the soil to cause consolidation. However, considering the permeability of clay is normally very low, it may take time up to several years after the application of preloading for the soil to consolidate. Therefore, vertical drains may be installed to provide drainage so that the water can be drained out faster and consideration can be expedited. Before the emergence of a geosynthetic strip, uh, vertical cylindrical sand drains were normally employed to facilitate drainage. In this case, holes were drilled and then the holes would be filled with sand because sand is known as a material with high permeability. With the presence of uh, geosynthetic strips, these strips can be stitched or inserted into the soft ground to facilitate drainage. This photo shows that uh, geosynthetic strips are being installed or are being stitched into the soft ground. Before I explain further how to design vertical drains using geosynthetic strips, allow me to do a quick review on consolidation which I believe you have learned this topic in soil mechanics class or in soil mechanics course. When we talk about one dimensional or vertical consolidation, I'm referring to the case where water is drained vertically. It could be upward or downward or both upward and downward. There are several equations that we have to refer to in relation to one dimensional consolidation. The first is consolidation settlement, which is given as delta H equals to H sub naught divided by one plus E sub naught C sub C log base 10 sigma sub naught prime plus delta sigma prime divided by sigma sub naught prime. The definition of each item is listed on the right hand side of this uh, slide. Okay, generally H sub naught here represents the uh, thickness of the consolidating soil at site. E sub naught is the initial void ratio of the consolidating soil at site. C sub C represents the compression index, which can be obtained from consolidation test in the laboratory. 
which represents the slope of the strip portion of a graph void ratio versus uh, log pressure. And then here we have sigma sub naught prime, which is the effective vertical stress at the mid plane of the consolidating soil. Similarly with this sigma sub naught prime. And then we have delta sigma prime represents the stress increase at the mid plane of the consolidating soil. Generally, we assume the stress increase at the mid plane of the consolidating soil equals to the pressure being applied on the ground surface. Uh, the second equation is degree of consolidation at any time t, which is given as u sub v equals to delta h sub t divided by delta h, where this delta h sub t represents the settlement that takes place after the application of the preloading. And delta h here represents the uh, total settlement as calculated before. Another equation is coefficient of vertical consolidation, which is given as small c sub v equals to t sub v multiplied by h sub d squared divided by t. This t sub v is the time factor. Let's take a look at this. Uh, yeah, this is the table u and then this t sub v. u is the degree of consolidation. Yeah. And then t sub v here is the time factor. You may also refer to graph, something like this. Okay. But in this case, I would prefer to use table because it gives us a relatively exact values compared to if we refer to graph something like this, maybe the uh, values uh, not as accurate as we anticipate. Next is a T here. This is the time after the application of a preloading. H sub D here represents the longest drainage path for water to flow out vertically from consolidating soil. So the value of H sub D depends on the uh, drainage, uh, drainage condition. It could be single drainage or it could be double drainage. If the water is allowed to flow only in the upward direction, it's considered as a uh, single drainage, then H sub D equals to the thickness of the consolidating soil. Similarly, if the water is allowed to flow only downward, the H sub D also equals to the thickness of consolidating soil. However, if water is allowed to flow in both direction, upward and downward, because the overlying soil and the underlying soil are permeable, that case is considered as a double drainage, then H sub D equals to uh, the thickness of the consolidating soil divided by two. So those are the uh, equations uh, related to one dimensional consolidation that we may refer to in the design later on. Now let's take a look at uh, a radial consolidation. Okay. There are several equations that we have to refer to. For example here, the average consolidation ratio for radial drainage u sub r. Previously, in the case of one-dimensional vertical consolidation, we have a degree uh, of consolidation which is uh, given as u sub v. In this case, it's u sub r. r uh, represents a radial. So u sub r here is expressed as 1 minus exponential minus 8 multiplied by t sub r divided by alpha, where T sub R here is the time factor for radial consolidation expressed as CH multiplied by T divided by D squared. Again, T here is the time after the application of uh, preloading. C sub H here is the coefficient of radial consolidation normally is related to coefficient of vertical 
consolidation C sub V. D squared here, D is the equivalent diameter of cylinder of soil around drain. Depending upon the pattern of the vertical drain, the arrangement of the vertical drains, D equals to 1.06 multiplied by S, that is for triangular pattern. I will show you what triangular pattern is later on. This D equals to 1.03 S for square grid pattern where S here is the spacing between the drains. Okay, these are the uh, vertical drain patterns. Okay. On the left-hand side, represent square pattern. So if you can observe, these are the vertical drains. Okay. So we can see the pattern here is square. Right? And S here is the spacing between vertical grains. S. So since it's a square, this S should be equal to this S. And D here, the equivalent diameter of the soil around the drain is given as this circle. Okay. Another pattern is what we call triangular pattern. So let's take a look at the arrangement of the vertical drains. So we can see here is triangular right so this is the equivalent diameter of the soil around the drain and again here is the spacing s okay spacing s right if we refer to this equation u sub r degree of a radial consolidation we have alpha here alpha here is given as n squared divided by n squared minus 1 multiplied by natural log n minus 3n squared minus 1 divided by 4n squared where n here equals to the ratio of capital D divided by D sub E. Capital D here is the equivalent diameter of the cylindrical soil around the drain whereas small d sub e here is the uh, equivalent diameter or the drain diameter if the uh, drain is in the form of uh, cylindrical sand drain then d sub e equals to the diameter of the drain <coughs> excuse, <coughs> excuse me but if uh, geosynthetic strip is being used so the uh, cross section of the geosynthetic strip is uh, approximately uh, rectangular. This is the width, capital B, and this is the thickness, small t. So this small t represents thickness, not represent time. Right? So D sub E here is given as 2 multiplied B plus T divided by pi. Right? So if we look at this equation, pi multiplied by D, is a, the perimeter of a circular and then the 2 B plus T is the perimeter of a rectangular. That's how we determine D sub E for geosynthetic strip. When preloading is combined with vertical drains, we would anticipate that water will flow vertically and radially, which will cause both vertical and radial consolidation. The combined vertical and radial consolidation is related by this equation. 1 minus U sub BR equals to 1 minus U sub B multiplied by 1 minus U sub R. Where U sub BR here is the degree of consolidation due to both vertical and radial consolidation. U sub V here is the degree of vertical consolidation and U sub R represents the degree of radial consolidation. Now let's take a look at an example how to apply geosynthetic strip combined with preloading to achieve certain percentage of consolidation in soft ground. In this case, Determine the spacing of vertical drains to achieve X percent of the expected final primary settlement due to an applied preloading for a given time T. Assume soil parameters such as C sub B, 
that is the uh, coefficient of vertical consolidation. C sub H, that is the coefficient of radial consolidation. E sub naught represents the initial word ratio at site. C sub C, that is the uh, compression index. So these parameters are given and assume no bearing capacity or slope failure. Now let's take a look at the uh, steps that we have to follow in order to solve uh, this problem. Uh, step number one is to calculate T sub V given C sub V, H sub D and T. So the equation that uh, need to be used is uh, this equation. C sub V equal to T V H D squared divided by T. Okay, since C sub V is given, T also given here. H sub D depends on the uh, thickness of the consolidating soil at the site as well as depends on the uh, drainage condition, whether it's a single drainage or double drainage. Then we rearrange the equation to obtain T sub V. Step number two is to determine U sub V, that is the degree of vertical consolidation. Since we have calculated T sub V in step number one, then we refer to table or graph U V versus T sub V as I have shown before. Eh? By knowing the value of T sub V, then we can obtain the value of U sub V. Step number three, we have to set UVR equals to X over 100 because the requirement is to achieve certain degree of consideration X percent as mentioned in the problem statement. So we set UVR equals to X over 100 to determine UR. So this is the equation that we have to refer to which combine uh, vertical and horizontal consolidation which is given as 1 minus UVR equals to 1 minus UV multiplied by 1 minus UR. So we set UVR here, X over 100, let's say 90%, UVR equals to 0 0.9. If uh, the required uh, degree of consolidation is 50%, then UVR equals to 0 0.5 equals to 1 minus U sub V. U sub V we have obtained in the previous step step number two, right? And then based on the known values, we can calculate the value of U sub R, that is the degree of radial consolidation. Step number four is to solve for D, that is the uh, equivalent diameter of the soil around the drain, where we have to refer to two different equations. First is the uh, time factor for radial consolidation, given as T sub R equals to C sub H multi, uh, multiplied by T divided by D squared and U R equals to 1 minus exponential minus 8 times T sub R divided by alpha. In this equation, T sub R, C H is given, T is given, so we have to solve for D. But in order to uh, solve this equation or to solve this D, we have to use in this equation the uh, degree of radial consolidation right? we obtained from the previous step here equals to 1 minus exponential minus 8 T sub R divided by alpha. The final step is to determine the spacing S which depends on the pattern of the vertical drain. It could be a square pattern or triangular patterns. So those are the steps that we have to follow in order to determine the spacing of the vertical drain. Okay, those are the materials that I want to share with you in this video related to the application of a geosynthetic strips in ground improvement. Until we meet again in other video, thank you.